Hello everyone, Jeff Stoker, Campfire Ministries. And I'm looking at and uh, looking around today. It's a uh, big controversies going on about uh, gay rights, gay marriage, and stuff like that. It seems like it's being left to a courtroom to do that. But the question is, what does the Scripture say about what is what does God in, in, say about it in the Bible? I'm going to go ahead and go over some verses here. And then, uh, and we'll let you be the judge of that. Now, this now I'm gonna give you give you some warning. This this segment's probably gonna step on some toes. I'm probably gonna get some hate speech on that because of my stance on the, on this issue. Um, but I'll you know seeing it. But uh, the you know, bottom line, God tells us to hate you know to love the sinner but hate the sin. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started in some scripture here. If you'll turn with me into Genesis 19, uh, starting with uh, verse uh, verse four. Uh, this is uh, back when uh, in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, God destroyed that city. But let's let's look at the, how the people were on that city and and why He destroyed it and how bad they were. It's, uh, they, they, it was destroyed due to sexual immorality. Uh, and it, and ch starting with uh, uh, chapter four, of course, uh, the, the angels are there to get to pull Lot out. Um, and, uh, and it says, before they lay down, uh, the men of the city, even the, the men of Sodom, can pass the house around both old and young people uh, from every quarter. They called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men, speaking of the angels that came in to, to, to get him out of the city, which uh, which came came to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now the word know them back then meant you know, they wanted to sleep with them. You know, this is a... Uh, a whole bunch of men come passing the house wanting to sleep with these other two men, you know, referring to homosexuality. And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door and left him and said, I pray you, my brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters in which I have not known, which I have not known men. Right there, I told you, it was men chasing those two angels because it was, to them, it was like fresh meat to them. Uh, 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 which have not known known man. Let me, I pray to you, bring bring them out to you, bring them out to you, and you and and do you to them what is good in your eyes. Only these these men do nothing. For the, therefore came they under my shadow of my roof. So see, they were wanting the men. They didn't care about the women. They they basically said, you know, stand back, and they see you, know, and uh, and it's, uh, didn't even want his two daughters. They wanted the men. So it's. And then God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah shortly after that. So go figure. This is you know telling you what God, you know, how God feels about homosexuality. Uh, let's go on into Leviticus. Now I know you're saying this is Old Testament and stuff, and that's and it's not like that no more. Well, I'm going to go into New Testament too, because you got to remember God's the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. He doesn't change. Now, now the, the only thing that did change, I'll, I'll get into late in here in a minute. So. Uh, <clears throat> And then, and now, if we go into Leviticus 18:22, starting with uh, verse 22, that reads. Uh, just give me a second. My computer's catching up here. Okay, there we go. Now, if you go into Levit Leviticus 18:22 in the King James, uh, that reads, uh, uh, "And thou shalt not, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind." It is an abomination. That's talking about a man trying to lie with a man, as with a with a as with a woman. So, because it is an abomination, uh, it even speaks of bestiality. And you know, right after that, I'll go ahead and read that too. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast and lie lie down there unto it. It is confusion. Okay. So again. Right there, you know, God, you know, God in the book, you know, in Leviticus is you know, showing us homosexuality is not right. Now, granted, He does love the homosexual world, which is the person, but not the sin of homosexuality. So, and I'll, <clears throat> and then the question lies is, you know, will I mean, can homosexuals make it into heaven? And I'll get into that here in just a little bit. So, and uh, moving right along, we're going to move into another part of Leviticus, which is in Leviticus chapter 20. And it's going to be verse uh, 13. Let's see what uh, what God tells us to do with the homosexuals and told us to do with homosexuals in the Old Testament. Now, now keep in mind this is the Old Testament. We don't, you know, we don't. You know, the, the, the those of us that follow Christ, we don't we don't follow the law, you know, the way it was in the Old Testament no more. Because when we follow Christ, it's already fulfilled. So, uh, but going into Leviticus 20:13, um, that actually reads. 
if he uh, if he turned to it uh and I just passed it up by uh twenty thirteen if a man also lies with mankind as he lies with woman, both of them have committed them in an abomination, and they shall surely be put to death. The blood of the, their blood shall be upon them. Okay, again, this is coming from, you know, from the commandments of God, you know, back in the Old Testament. So evidently, you know, it's, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not here to judge God, you know, for those that are, uh, you know, those who are living that lifestyle, you know, according to Scripture, and, and I'll get into this in a little bit. You've already been judged. Um, and all I'm doing, all I am, is just a messenger boy. So, uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to move in, move along to uh, 1 Chronicles 6 9. And it's, now this is coming up in the New Testament. I'll show them what God, you know, how God feels about you know, homosexuality. Uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 6 9. I say Chronicles, and it's Corinthians. Uh, let's see here. Give me one second. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 reads. Yeah, just give me a second. First Corinthians six nine. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? In other words, you ain't gonna make it to heaven if you're unrighteous. Bottom line, that's what that what that says. Uh, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idlers, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. In other words, these are a group of people. These are groups of people that won't enter in the kingdom of heaven. Yet, uh, and you, you know, you know, maybe sitting there thinking, based off that, who's going to enter? And I'll get into that in here in a minute at the, at the end. Okay, now, check this out, where it says uh, "nor infeminate." The word "infeminate" there actually means, and it, it actually means a, a man uh, trying to act like a woman or being or being a, being feminine, not being a. He's not being manly. He's going after other men. Maybe he's cross-dressing or whatever. But, but it's you know, it's a homosexual homosexual type act of being infeminate. Okay. Now, if we go into First Timothy nine uh, through First uh, Timothy chapter one nine through ten, uh, again we're going to see some more here. Uh, chapter one. And just give me one second to bring that up. First Timothy chapter one verses nine through ten reads this: Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers and uh, and and for uh, murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers and manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. That's man defiling himself with man. Uh, that's a man. You know, that, that, for molesters, or, uh, I'm sorry, for men stealers. Men stealers is another form of homosexuality, or it could also be a you know, woman stealing a man. For liars, for for purged persons, and if if there be any other thing that is contrary to to, to sound doctrine, so these are the people that uh, that uh, that the law law is made for. Okay, now let's move on to the first chapter of Romans and see what it says there. So. And don't get me wrong. Again, I'm I'm telling you now. I it's a, it's a, I love people. I love everybody as a person. It's just a, it's just a sin. You know, just like Jesus hates sin, and I've given my life to Christ. I hate sin too. Even though I, I I'll admit I do mess up sometimes, just like anybody else. But I, <laughs> and, but the, the difference is is you know I've got Jesus. I can go to and you know ask forgiveness and and repent of that whenever I do mess up. Uh, but let me go ahead and go into the first chapter of Romans here. And we're going to start at about verse, uh, let's see, probably about verse 18 or 19. Yeah, we're going to start at verse 18. I'm going to read, the, read on and I'll break it up as I go. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So in other words, there's going to be a lot of people trying to hold the truth in unrighteousness, but because uh, because that which which may be known of God is made manifest in the uh, in them, for God hath showed it showed it unto them, for the invisible things from Him, uh, or I'm sorry, the visible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being being understood by the things that are made. In other words, you can see an example of Christ even in creation on that, and people are you know are, you know they're, they're choosing not to ignore and choosing to ignore that. Um, 
even the eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. So in other words, all these homosexuals and idolaters and murderers and stuff like that, they're, they're without excuse. They, they, they know the truth. They do it despite what, the, you know, what Scripture says and what God says. Because, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like into corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to, the, to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their, their, their own bodies between themselves. For this cause, God gave them up to, un, uh, to, and for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even, even the women did change the natural use into that which was against nature. Okay, now check this out. It, do, it does say that God gave them up to vile affections. Why did he do that? It was their choice. You know, you, you know a, person's, a person naturally is born into sin, but no one is born gay. This is right here is proven that it is a choice. You know, so they, decide, they decided they, you know, the, the, the homosexuals and all these sinners and fornicators and stuff like that, it's not just homosexuals, but you know, I'm using homosexuality as, a, as an example because there's so much controversy on, on what you know, on, on gay marriage and stuff right now. I'm just trying to show what God wants in that, and it's not really up to the courts on you know whether homosexuality is right or wrong. Just like it's not up to the courts to decide whether murder is right or wrong. It's all you know up to God you know, to choose that. Uh, and God's already told us that you know these things are wrong, and it's written clear and, and documented. Who who changed? Uh, these people are changed the in the truth of God into a lie. See, they chose to do that. God didn't do that. He didn't let you know. The, the, you know he he don't make nobody you know come out a homosexual. For God, and then for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Another words, okay, they chose to do this, so God gave them over to this vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves in recompense of the error in which was met. As even they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate means that mind is seared. They're set in their ways. They're not, you know, they literally take an act of God to turn them around and get them to see the truth on this. Uh, for those... To do those things which are not convenient. So you know, you, you go out there and witness to you know, to a lot of homosexuals and a and a lot of people that are in, you know that, that support it and and um, and a lot of people and, and not just homosexuals. I mean, you go out there and witness to you know to uh, to somebody that's in, involved in any kind of fornication for that matter. It's hard to get through to them because you know God's given them that reprobate mind. It's it's, it's it literally takes an act of God. I mean, they they literally can't see the truth. So it's uh, unless God reveals it to them, and sometimes you got to make them aware, aware of that. Uh, being filled with uh, this, and, and I'm going to uh, reprobate to do these things which are not convenient. Okay, so evidently God does not like homosexuality. He does not like the sin. Now the question is, can a homosexual come to know Jesus? Can they repent of it, and they, and uh, can they, and can they make it to heaven? The answer to that, if they're breathing. And still alive and, and living in that and are willing to turn from it the answer is yes they can turn from it they don't have to be that way homosexuality a homosexual is what a person is is not who they are okay now you know like I said we live in a time right now toward the you know to, to, it's, uh, um, uh, we're, we're people are leaving leaving it up to courts and and stuff like that to decide you know the sanctity of marriage you know is you know is 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 gay marriage right or wrong and are leaving it up to the courts and, and again um, uh the courts cannot sanctify sanctify uh, as to a, as a marriage what uh, what god did uh and the courts cannot sanctify a marriage what uh, what god did did not sanctify so he god didn't sanctify gay marriage now, that's the world trying to do that. Everyone needs to needs to be educated with what God says about these matters, point blank. Uh, the old, uh, God is the ultimate judge, far above the Supreme Court, and, and uh, you know, far above us, and far above any court that we have here. And God is the ultimate judge. Uh, any other court of man, and he he will decide all cases before him. 
and uh, we must make, and we have to bring bring all eyes to the fact that we will will we'll be judged by a holy and righteous God. No no amount of rights will save save our souls. Only the faith in the, uh, in the in the shed blood of the only begotten Son Jesus Christ can save us. That's it. Nothing more. Okay. Now the question now the question is is now that you know that, that everybody can be saved regardless on their sin, regardless on if they've done an abominable acts or not, if you're a homosexual or whatnot, if you're a homosexual out there and you're hearing this, I mean, I know this is probably stepping on your toes, going against everything you believe, but you know what? God is a righteous God. He's a true God, and He wants, He does not want you to live the life that you're living as a, as a homosexual. He, uh, he wants you to repent of that and, and come to Him so you can have the chance to make it into heaven. And there's, the way you do that is if you... Uh, <clears throat> and the way you do that is real simple. First thing you got to do, you got to admit that you got to realize that, that, that you're a sinner, that you're a sinner. We're all sinners. And, and if you go turn with me into Romans, go to Romans 3.10 with me. You'll, uh, I'm going to go through some more scriptures on that. So... So, Romans 3.10 says that it, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and read 11 too. Usually I don't go into 11, but there is none that understandeth, and there is none that seeketh after God. See, there is the key right there. Seek after God. If you, I don't care what lifestyle you're living in, seek after God and He'll show you. And, he'll lead, he'll, and if it don't line up with Scripture, it's not God. Okay, now... If you go into Romans 3.23, let's go down to Romans 3.23 and see what it says. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in Romans 6.23, let's go to, let's flip over here to Romans 6. And this is King James Version, by the way. That's all I read from. Romans 6.23 reads this. And this is where it gets good. For the wages of sin... Is death now the death that it's talking about here is not uh, just a physical death. It's talking about when you die. Where do you go after you die? It's it, it's, it's it's speaking of an eternal death, which is in hell. But the gift of God is is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> so and then now let's flip back over to back over to Romans <clears throat> chapter five again, in verse uh, I believe it's eight. 5 8 Romans 5 8 re uh, reads and but God commend his love towards us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us okay now if you go if you go with me to 5 uh, if you go with me to John 3 16 it's where it really gets good and it, I'm sure that these are verses that everybody's heard before but you know what it never hurts to hear them again so and it, but this is the road to salvation people and John uh, 3.16 reads this. Um, if, uh, if John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that only begotten Son here is Jesus Christ. Now this is Jesus speaking about himself right here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did not, now 17, if you go on, 17 says, uh, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, but that the world through him might be saved. The key word in there, might be saved. In other words, you have to first believe. That's the first step in, in, in gaining your salvation and getting your life on track with, with, with Jesus Christ and with God the Father. Okay, now, if you keep going, he that believeth on him is not condemned. In other words, if you believe on Jesus, and if you begin, if you open your heart to Jesus and give your life to Christ, and then, Lord, I'm sorry for what I did, and I ask you to come in and change me, then, then you're not, you're not going to be condemned. And you start, you start doing everything. Now, let me get something straight too. The word repent, whenever the word repent, or when you give your life to Christ, does not mean say, okay, Lord, I'm sorry, and go back to doing the same thing. It's saying I'm sorry, and you change your thinking, try to change it, to, you know, to try to walk in, in, in the way He would want you to walk, the way He did, the way He walked. In, uh, in in righteousness. Now it goes on to say, "He that believeth on the uh, on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God." And this is the condemnation that light come into the world, and man love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Okay, and now here's the thing. Okay, <clears throat> so. Uh, 
So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you know, we're born this way. Yeah, you're born into sin, but you're not born a homosexual. You're born into sin, period. Okay? And then, uh, and the, and the condemn condemnation is, you know, is this. You know, you chose the road that you went, you know, you walk, you walk, you choose the road that you walk. You either, you're either for Christ or you're not. So if you're for Christ, guess what? You're going to have a much better life. Because that's what he teaches, is truth and love. But if you, you know, so, and you, you know, I oftentimes, you know, whenever I go into these sermons on, 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 a, on a controversial topic like this, I get accused of, oh, you're judging me. No, I'm not judging you. God already judged you, you know, you know by, by whether or not you accepted or rejected Christ. He, he's like, you're already judged. You've got, but you can change that judgment by turning, giving your life over to Christ and changing that thinking, and then start with a new, new slate. So, so people, that's the, my big thing is, yeah, I know there's, I'm stepping on some people's toes here, but you know what? I do it because I love you, and I do it because Jesus loves you, and I do too. And I, I don't want to see no one go to, you know, no one go to hell. And that's, you know, and you know, the homosexual lifestyle is, is, is a destructive road. I mean, I don't care how you look at it. You can call me what you want to call me. I mean, you can curse me all you want. I don't care. I'm going to stick with what God says, even if it means my death. So it's uh, and I'm going to continue to 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 show truth in this, and um uh, and it's and then you know I'm going to continue to 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 reach out to those that are in that lifestyle amongst other lifestyles, not just homosexuality. I'm using this because that's what's so rampant and it's a big thing in the media right now. I'm trying to get some some deception out of there, you know, you know show show expose some deception and show people some truth out there. So, so people, I mean, if you're if you're if if you're a homosexual and you're listening to this, I urge you, don't let that rule your life. Just just the best what the best thing you can do, and and you may you may you may hate me for saying this, because because I know it's hard to come out of that lifestyle. And so, but the best thing you can do is just say this prayer. If you if you if you want to come out, if you're in that lifestyle and you see understand what I'm saying here, and uh, and. And can 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 see the 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 dangers in the lifestyle that you're in. I urge you to say this prayer with me right now, dear Heavenly Father. I just come before you humbly as I know how. Lord, I am in a I'm in a bad lifestyle, and I just ask, first of all, you forgive me for choosing that lifestyle. And, I, and, and not only that, I just ask that you just forgive me for all sin that I've done against you and against others. Lord Jesus, I understand now that you died on the, on, on the cross for my sins. Even the, even the, the homosexuality, homosexual acts that I've committed, you even died for that, Lord. And I ask that you just wipe me clean of that and just and forgive me of that. And, and, I, and Lord, I just want to pray that you just come into my, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you come into my heart and change me. Lord, change me into, and, and help me to live the way you want me to live in Jesus' name. And uh, Lord, make me the new cre uh, make me a new creature to, that walks after Your light. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, congratulations! You just made the biggest step you can possibly make in your entire life. You can be assured that <clears throat> that you are forgiven of that. You can be assured that you will you, you'll make it into heaven. Uh, the, uh, the, the now the only thing is that you do have from this point forward you need to put forth the effort to walk that. But guess what? Because you have Christ in your heart, that's going to give you power and boldness to be able to walk that. Now, <clears throat> now I recommend that you get you an, uh, get you a good Bible, preferably a King James, not a Queen James. That's an, that's a perversion of the King James. So it's, uh, I recommend that you get a King James. Bible and start reading it daily, and I would start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those those four gospels are the are the are the life and the birth, the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's where you're going to get to know Jesus the best is in those scriptures. And I I, I recommend that you pray daily. That's how we talk to God. And uh, what I just did just there was pray. I mean, now from this point forward, you don't necessarily have to pray that. And now, if you do catch yourself screwing up, and you happen to catch it, yeah, I would go ahead. Oh Lord, I'm sorry for, you know, what I just did. Help me not to do it again. I mean, because you're in your walk, serving Christ is a daily learning, and uh, is a, is a, is basically it's a lifestyle to you where you're daily learning something new. You're always finding. You know, you're gonna always throughout the rest of your life. You're always gonna see falls in your life. And now, being that you're giving your life to Christ, you're gonna start noticing that you're gonna start desiring. Those uh, some of those uh, those bad characteristics, those maybe some of those bad habits you had, less and less. And then the more you resist them, the more the easier it is to stay away from them. <coughs> and that's 
There's going to be times where you might fall back and screw up a little bit, but you know, you know what? You're still young. You just gave your life to Christ. You're still learning, and you will be all your life. You know, you're going to be. You know, it's going to be things. There's going to be trials and stuff, but because you serve Christ, He's going to teach you. Okay, He's going to teach you His way, and then you're going to notice it's a better way. Okay, and I also recommend that you go out and tell people. Tell people, look, hey, I just gave my life to Christ. This is what I came out of. This is what I was doing. This is what He did for me. He delivered me from this. Okay, it's um, and now and and I also want to hear uh, from those that you know that said that prayer too, and you can reach me, and uh, I'll leave some information in the description of this video below. Uh, you can uh, you can reach uh, me or or my wife Mary uh, at at uh, through our website campfire ministry and it'd be www dot dot webs dot com. Uh, and we have a place and you can contact us there. You can contact us uh, via uh, through that. Our phone number and address is on that site as well. I'm also going to leave information at the bottom of this video. You can also find us at Facebook under Jeff Stoker. That's me. I'm the founder of uh, Camp Fire Ministries. And, it's, uh, <coughs> and uh, you, you, you can go uh, just type in on Jeff Stoker on my, on my Facebook. And if you see that picture behind me in that brown frame uh, where I'm wearing that black and white shirt and then my wife is wearing that gray shirt, that's uh, uh, that's the picture you'll see on Facebook. Uh, that's my profile picture. Just you know, send me a friend request, and I will accept it. Um, you can uh, I also have a public figure your page that you can go like on there. Uh, I've also got a Facebook page for Campfire Ministries. So there's several ways you can contact with and contact me, and, I, and I'll put all those links at the bottom of this video after and um, uh, and at the end of this segment. Uh, and then um, I also want to encourage encourage all those out there, all the Christians out there, those that are already saved, to go out there and spread the gospel. Do what it takes to to lead that one soul to Jesus. Uh, do you know you know, you know Scripture's real clear on on something. It says not everybody that cries Lord Lord will will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that uh, do the will of my Father. And, and the biggest will is the Great Commission. You know, again, Jesus told us to go out there and heal the sick, give sight to the blind, baptize in His name, preach the gospel. I mean, you know, it's, you know all down to the Bible. You know, a lot of places that you know, the, most of the time, you know, the Jesus would heal somebody and then they would accept Him. I mean, it's it's how it went. Um, today, I mean, it's, uh, um, some people are healed, healed, and then accepted, and some, you know, you just tell them hey, it could be something. Hey, you know, Jesus loves you, and uh, and it brings them to Him. It, and, but Right now, I do know this, people, and this goes out to the church, and it also goes out to the non-believers. Time is short. We're not far from Christ coming back. I mean, look at the things that are going on in this world. I mean, it's it's, it's not going to be long at all before Christ comes back. And if He comes back, and if He comes, and your heart's not right, I mean, I, I, it, I, it, my heart goes out to those that don't know Him right now. It really does. It does not know Christ, and are not following Christ. Because it's uh, those those out there are still living in sin. Um, you know, homosexuality is just one of many sins. That's just, the, but that seems to be the big, biggest topic this day. And I was just wanted to get that out of there. Um, and I just uh, and I just pray that this. I just hope and pray that this video touches somebody. I know it's going to make a lot of people mad too because it's going against what they what they've been taught, what they what they believe, and, and it could be they're living in that lifestyle and don't want out of it, and they think it's okay. But that's, you know what? That's you know. After this video, I've gotten that you know the, the, the truth is out there, and it's you know uh, those that hear this video and they get upset over it. That's between you and God at that point. So I've said all I can say on the on the topic. Um, I've said uh, you know I'm taking over scriptures. So and I, but I, again, I just hope and pray that this touches somebody out there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say one more prayer, and this is going to be for that. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you again for this day. Lord, I just want to thank you for those that, that watch this video. And Lord, I just want to—I really want to thank you for any anybody out there that that's in homo, that's, that 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 not, not maybe that they were a homosexual up until they saw this video and they gave their lives to you, Jesus. I just want to thank you. That's one less person that Satan's got deceived. Lord, I just want to thank you that they saw the deception in the, in the, in in that in that lifestyle. And Lord, I just want to pray for those that even those that that maybe in other sins that sin that not a homosexual maybe they watch this video and and because uh, I did mention other sins and I just want to pray for all those out there that are living in sin, Lord, that <clears throat> that if uh, that don't know you, Lord, I just want to pray that somebody watched this video and it touched them, 
And Lord, I just want to lift up those that don't know you, Lord, that, that maybe they haven't seen this video, and, uh, and maybe they won't, Lord, but I just want to pray that you send somebody to tell them the truth, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray for revival to happen in this, in this, in this nation, and not only in this nation, but let it spread worldwide, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, I know we're living in the last days, but Lord, I, the Bible does speak of a final revival in it, Lord. I just want to pray that that comes quickly, Lord, that you just continue to pour out your spirit on all flesh. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And for all those that, that's watching this, and are, and I just want to say thanks and God bless all of y'all.